I think we're going to see more examples of remission or what we call functional cure in a few patients in unique circumstances, like early treatment of um, infants, early acute infection, transplantation. These are, you know, so I think we'll see more reports of this as people look deeper into their own patient cohorts of um, of occasional reports of cure. Um, so translating into people saying that um, cure is looking quite possible for some people. But I think the overall strategy is we want a much larger scalable cure, and I think that is going to be really quite the challenge. And um, I want to use the line again, but I don't think I can use it a second time <laughs> two <laughs> years <laughs> later. <laughs> I've got to think of something else. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's much, much harder to say. I think we'll see more examples of, fun of, of remission and functional cure mm -hmm. given the astute observations from the researchers that you see up here um, but what we what we want long term is is is, a, is, is much more than that and that's going to take a long time yeah, and I, I think you know from a researcher point of view you know when we we feel still that we are the research field has moved on so fast and so well and so as a research perspective that's really exciting um, you know a few years ago you know to say you're going to do cure research you, you wouldn't be taking that seriously now you are and, and that, from our perspective, is, is, is a real change. And I think that has to be differentiated, you know, from saying we are going to provide a cure, which is a, a, a completely different um, statement. Um, so bearing that in mind, yes, you know, primary HIV infection, as you say, is clearly the area we are looking at. And I, and I think one has to remember that all the sort of the case reports that have come through so far of remission or cure are essentially not by mistake, but they weren't deliberate. You know, they, they've come through because something else has happened and, oh, look, there, something has, there's been a functional cure, a sterilizing cure as a result. Yes, I mean, we are looking at other cohorts. Um, we are looking at um, patients receiving chemotherapy in a cohort in London, for example. Again, just to see if there's any hint that there's something going on in the reservoir, that there are any other agents that we need to be looking at. Um, we're looking at other patients who are receiving other therapies, immunoglobulin being an example. Again, not necessarily thinking there is going to be a cure, but just looking if that is going to point us in the right sort of direction. It's a way of, sort of taking, a, taking a possible intervention that we think is safe. Does it work? Doesn't it? Make, make a decision fairly soon and then move on and, and test something else just to give you a feel for where the field is. I think because, you know, we need to show that this is something that we can move forward over the next five or ten years, targeting those patients who we think are most susceptible. You know, for a scalable cure, it is always going to be primary infection from my point of view. But there may be others, you know, elite controllers, other examples like that where we may focus things further on. But I think, you know, we're, we're, we're very early on in this and you, could, you have to kind of be a bit directed to start with. Uh, I, th I think in terms of what the message that I would want to give to HIV-infected persons is that, or, or persons who might be at risk for HIV infection, is that while we're tremendously excited about the possibility that we may be moving the field forward towards a cure. We know that we can have a dramatic impact on people's lives by individuals being tested for HIV, uh, becoming aware of their HIV status, getting on therapy when that's appropriate, and in the context of uh, mother-to-child prevention, uh, using appropriate uh, uh, antiretroviral therapy to prevent uh, transmission in that context, uh, and that we shouldn't lose sight of the enormous benefits that are available today through the use of antiretroviral therapy for individual health, for prevention of transmission, uh, and to protect infants uh, from HIV infection, and to uh, redouble our efforts in those directions while we wait for a cure. <laughs>